Hey guys, it's Charles Austin here with Liquid Blue Cabrete in Cabrete, Dominican Republic. And a lot of people are always wondering what type of protective equipment uh, should you use when you're learning? What type of pr protective equipment do you use? Once you know how, do you use any protective equipment? For example, a helmet, an impact vest, uh, knee pads, a uh, two millimeter wetsuit, or even if you need a full wetsuit, then a full wetsuit. Well, to answer that first part, if the water was freezing, I would probably need a wetsuit. So there goes that. Now, when you're learning, it might be a little bit different than when you are a more advanced rider, but the difference is actually not that big. So my recommendation always, and I do this myself, is that I wear a helmet, which is this Simba helmet right here, and it protects my head. It's gonna make me, you're gonna see a couple scratches on here, which is from moving around, but also I've had a couple hits, and it's a multi-hit helmet. It's not a one-time uh, helmet. So this thing's gonna last me probably forever, a very long time and uh, a helmet is always definitely recommended now whatever helmet you want to use that's sort of up to you but the Simba helmet's great I just saw Radiculo Balls Miller from uh, on the water's just coming up to here just saw Balls Miller who actually has his own helmet line with Enzis and that helmet also looks superb and it was around $80 uh, 80 euros so maybe $100 and then the Simba helmet's around 200 bucks so having a helmet, even a ProTech $40, $60 helmet, skateboarding will be perfectly fine, or a water helmet. Now the next thing that I use myself is an impact vest, right? So having an impact vest of some sort is definitely going to be a needed tool. And the reason why I use an impact vest is because when you fall from the foil, you're not falling at sea level, you're falling from above, generally speaking. So you're gonna feel it uh, when you fall at a high speed or if you're in the waves. It's not a flotation device, because it doesn't have the 50 newtons, but it definitely does help with, um, with the impact, which is what it's for. And now, well, I don't want to show this yet, but I'm holding these. So that's the end of what I use. I use an impact vest and a helmet, and then usually I'd either have a t-shirt on or a long sleeve Lycra, uh, depending on the situation, depending on the day. Right now I want to get a little bit of sun, so that's what I'm in a shirt. But now, when you're advanced, the question is, do I need knee pads, right? I don't know if uh, we can see my knees from there, but do I need knee pads for, for winging? And the answer, at least for myself, is no. Now, in the beginning, I always told people, like, you don't really need knee pads, but I've sort of changed that up a little bit. And the reason why is that I see a lot of people that are learning and they're taking their time to learn, right? So they're not getting it right away, which is perfectly fine and normal. They're taking more hours. And when you take more hours, you're spending a lot of time on your knees, even though, generally speaking, when we're doing lessons, the whole point that we're always reiterating is that we're, the sport's not done on your knees, right? So you always want to go from knee to standing as soon as possible, and that's going to avoid uh, the chafing that you're going to be getting. So a lot of people usually get scraped up on the knees and also on their shins. Most of the people that get um, uh, sort of scratches on their shins is because when they're on the board, right imagining this was the board it's a very bad drawing but if the board is this way if I'm on my knees and I have the balls of my feet up you see my shin is not touching so if I was flat like this then of course my knees would be touching but I'm actually not moving much so I don't think I'm gonna be getting the rash uh, there but where you will get the rash is in this technique so imagining the board is still straight ahead some people do the technique where they have their feet off the board. And when your feet are off the board, now your shin, no matter what, is in full contact and gonna be probably moving a little bit. So those guys that do that sideways technique, I always see them with scratches, and um, I've seen some nasty ones actually, that are on the shins, and that's because they're doing this sideways technique uh, more than anything, and they also get a little bit on top of the ankle. So what I do suggest if you're learning in a warm water spot, because most likely you're gonna be in a bikini, you're gonna be in a bathing suit, is you should be using all the protective gear, the helmet, the impact vest. If you have access to a two millimeter full wetsuit, or at least long pants, so it could be short arms, then that's gonna be sort of a replacement to needing knee pads, and that's gonna help you be protected from some scuffs that can happen with the foil. But if you're not using a, a wetsuit, then get yourself a set of knee pads. These are just from Amazon. 
uh, I believe the brand is called Toco. I'll put the brand, I'll put a, a link down below. But if you just type in knee pads on Amazon, or you go to a pharmacy, or you go to a sporting goods store, you're gonna find volleyball knee pads. Uh, maybe, I don't think skateboarding, because they would probably have a hard outside. But getting yourself a set of knee pads might actually help you out, spend, have a bit more time on the water, because once you do start getting scratched up, a lot of people start taking time off the water, which is not the point. We want to be able to be on the water, have fun, and, uh, and essentially keep our body in one piece. So with that being said, this video is just talking about do you actually need knee pads? And the answer is, when you're learning, it's definitely recommended unless you have a neoprene. But if you don't have a neoprene, then getting yourself a set of knee pads or the school that you're going with supplies them, then that is gonna be an option for you. For us here in Cabaret at Liquid Blue, we supply knee pads now and as well some light water shoes in case uh, because some people can benefit from that. Even though here in Liquid Blue, or not in Liquid Blue, but here in Cabaret, we don't really have much rocks uh, in the shoreline. We don't have a reef, so it's perfectly easy. Oh, a guy's doing some 360s. Well, it's gonna be late. The guy's doing some 360s out there, winging. But in any case, we don't have any reef, so you can walk in and out freely. You don't need water shoes, and it's perfectly fine. So, with that being said, guys, in terms of do you need knee pads or not, I gave you the answer, and I think that pretty much ends it. It's a 20, $20, like anywhere between $10 to $30 investment. It's gonna last you a long time. These ones have some use behind it, and I was thinking that they're gonna get damaged on the top, and so far, so good. They've lasted, so, and this is being used for multiple people. So if you're gonna get your own set, it's gonna last you a long time, and you'll be able to pass it down or pass it on to someone else in need. But once you, get learn, once you learn how to ride, you learn how to get standing efficiently, you're not gonna need knee pads anymore, and they're gonna be a, more of a burden than anything. So that being said, guys, it's Charles Austin here with Liquid Blue Cabaret in Cabaret, Dominican Republic. And here's just an average day in March, 20, 25 knots, can't complain.